Good morning, friends. This is my breakfast today. I'm having one of these Hawaiian bagels. You will have seen this. You will see this in my grocery haul that'll be all out on Friday. Some of this Tofuti whipped cream cheese, some candy heart grapes, and a cup of black tea. And the reason why it looks like it's got something floating on it is because I put some of this moringa leaf powder in it. It's just a really healthy supplement and I don't even taste it when it's in coffee or tea. You can even put it in smoothies. So that's my breakfast today. So while I was cleaning up the kitchen, my Swanson vitamins order came. I thought I would open it here on camera. Maybe. <laughs> I need to get one of those um, box cutters to keep up in the kitchen because I get a lot of packages. All right, so I definitely got more than just vitamins. They were having a pretty good sale on some things. I can't remember prices, so I'll just pull stuff out and show you what I got. I love this Newman's Own Organic Black Tea. It's my favorite black tea. And as far as I know, I can't find it in any of the stores around my area, so I always get it either from Vitacost or from Swanson Vitamins. They both carry it. I got quite a bit of tea this time. I've been drinking more tea lately, and so I've still got quite a bit of tea, but I have my favorites, and I've run out a lot of my favorites. Um, I've never tried this one, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, one of the other channels I watch, um, Rachel from Sweet and Simple Home, she, this is her absolute favorite. So I thought, oh, I'll give that a try. And it's caffeine-free. I'm always looking for caffeine-free teas because sometimes in the evening I like to have a, a hot cup of tea. Now this one I've had numerous times. It's also caffeine-free. Bengal spice. This is very spicy um, as far as like very cinnamony and a little bit hot even. Um, it's got cinnamon, carobs, chicory, Spice, natural spice, vanilla flavor, uh, ginger, cardamom, black pepper, cloves, and nutmeg. And then the last kind of tea I got was the wild raspberry hibiscus from Stash. This is one of my favorites. I love to make cold tea out of this, iced tea. And I was getting running low, and so I picked up some more of that. And then I got a couple of things for my long-term storage. Um, I got some of this egg replacer. 
You never know what's going to happen in the future. Our, egg, our chickens aren't laying very many eggs. They're getting older. We've really considered replacing them, but we're not sure if this is the best time because of supply and demand um, and, and shortages and supply chain issues and things. I'm sure we could get the chicks. We can go to any farm store and get chicks. But my worry is that we won't have um, feed, that feed might become a problem. So we're really kind of not sure what we're going to do about chickens. I kind of wanted to do meat chickens this fall again, and that's the same issue I'm having, the same worry, is that we buy the chicks and then not have any food to feed them. So I bought two bags of the egg replacer, and I will package these. This is going to be in a different video. Um, I invested in a mylar bag sealer and some mylar bags and oxygen absorbers and I'm going to do a whole video on that but I'm going to go ahead and repackage this into um, mylar bags to give it a longer shelf life so got two bags of that and one bag is equivalent to 34 eggs so that should last us I would use it like in baking I wouldn't make um, scrambled eggs or anything out of it um, let's see what else do I have in here oh we have this packaged because it's in a glass jar. I love this stuff. Better than bouillon. And I always get the organic because the organic doesn't have any dairy in it. The regular chicken, better than bouillon, for whatever reason, has dairy in it. They put dairy in the strangest things but the organic kind doesn't. So I just used the last of my jar last week, and so I was glad to get more of that. So then I picked up some co more coconut oil, and they look like they're exactly the same, but they're not. This is the extra virgin coconut oil that would actually has a coconut flavor in it, so you wouldn't want to use this in any kind of a savory dish that you didn't want to taste like coconut but they also had it in the flavor free. So I got the flavor free to use in cooking, like if I wanna add coconut oil to my mashed potatoes instead of butter or anything like that, I'll use this and not this. And then I picked up some iodized sea salt. Um, I have a thyroid condition, had it for many years, and um, I don't usually use iodized salt. I usually just been been using either gray salt or pink Himalayan salt. But <clears throat> when you have a thyroid problem, you need a little bit more iodine. So I got this just to use like in my cooking or maybe to sprinkle on my food sometimes, but mainly just to use in cooking so that I can get a little bit more iodine in my diet and maybe that will help regulate my thyroid a little bit better. I've been having issues with it. Um, I feel like the dose of the medication that I'm on is too high, but the last time I had it, my blood work done at an actual lab, it said my levels were normal, even though I felt like, it's hard to explain what you feel like when your thyroid's too high, but it just felt like it was too high. I felt like uh, heart palpitations and jitteriness, and nervousness, Just it's just a weird feel, feeling. So I'm going to get my blood work done again through Everlywell this month uh, in March here, and I'm going to test my thyroid levels, and I'm going to see what they say, and I'll try to change the dosage of my medication depending on what that blood work comes back and says. But anyway, in the meantime, I didn't think it would hurt anything if I increased my iodine in my diet. So there's that. And then the last two things I got were some pumpkin seed oil. Um, it was buy one, get one free, I think. So if you remember back in February, I did the Everly Well test to check my cholesterol and lipids. And I got my results back very quickly, within a few days, but I haven't talked about it on here yet. They came back slightly abnormal, just slightly. My family doesn't think I need to even worry about it, but it kind of has freaked me out a little bit. My total cholesterol, that's including bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, and triglycerides, they factor those all together. If it's 200 and below, that's normal. 
mine was 205 so just slightly above normal so I I eat a really good diet but I do have a habit of falling back to sugar whenever I'm stressed I I mean that's just <laughs> that's my that's my kryptonite I fall I just love sugar I really do so I've really been trying very very hard to get away from sugar I'm not 100% still love my dark chocolate you know um, another thing I'm trying to do is eat more whole grains which I did that a lot anyway but now I'm basically pretty much cutting out as much white refined flour as I can yes I did have a bagel this morning but I wanted to try those new bagels and they were pretty good but anyway one of the things you can do is uh, do omega vitamins well normally that's like fish oil and I was looking and looking and looking at all the fish oils on Swanson I couldn't find one that I thought was right and I remember when I was a child my mom would give me cod liver oil every morning before school and then you would burp fish all day long and that's one of the reasons why I don't like fish to this day and I, Scott was saying yeah you take this fish oil and sometimes you burp fish and I'm like oh I just can't tolerate that so under the same like heading of cardiovascular health they had the pumpkin seed oil so I'm like okay that I can do I don't think I'll be belching anything nasty from these so um, I'm gonna take start taking these pumpkin seed oil lower my sugar intake lower my carb my uh, refined flours do more whole wheat and in a few months, I'm going to check my uh, cholesterol levels again and see if I can get that below 200. That's my goal. Oh, I've been doing more oatmeal, too. With my digestion, I swear I have the stupidest digestion ever. <laughs> you should be able to eat oatmeal with o IBS. That's my condition that I have. I should be able to eat oatmeal. It's soluble fiber. And I like oatmeal. I really do. Still got grocery bags on the floor if you're hearing that. Oliver's playing on them. I gotta get those picked up today. Oliver, get off of those. Get off of there. But no, I can't eat oatmeal. I can't eat it every day. It makes my, it gets, I can eat it for a day or two, and then if I eat it that third day, oh my goodness, my, I physically like change sizes in pants because my belly bloats out. So I look five months pregnant if I eat oatmeal three days in a row. <laughs> and I feel terrible, pain, and just awful. Just don't feel good. So it's like, man, <laughs> I just I just can't catch a break. But anyway, that's my Swanson haul. I am, hope you enjoyed it. I've got a lot of things I need to get done today, and I'm really trying to decide and prioritize what I wanna do today. Um, I could do like the normal things that I always show you, but that would be kind of boring. Or Olivia and I could dive into a project that's going to take more than one day to get done. And I could just show you snippets of that, which that's where I'm leaning because that's where my head's at right now is this project that I want to get, I want to get it done. I'd love to get it done today, but I don't think that's feasible, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. I'm going to go sit down for a little bit. I haven't done my quiet time yet today, even though I've already cleaned the kitchen. The kitchen was bugging me, so I had to get it cleaned. And then my box came. So I'm going to go do my quiet time. And then once Olivia gets up and around and gets chores and stuff done outside, we'll probably tackle that project. That's what I'm thinking we'll do. This is what I'm having for lunch. It's a large salad with mostly lettuce, leftover chicken from our dinner last night some radishes, some cut up little uh, yellow or orange tomatoes, um, a little bit of this sprinkled on top. This stuff is really good on salads. And then I'm going to have it with my honey mustard dressing. And then in this cup is just some tea left over from yesterday that I didn't get finished drink drunk. Is that the right word? didn't finish drinking it, put it in the refrigerator. I'm going to finish it and then I'll make me another big thing of tea today. Green, this is a herbal tea and I'm going to be making a green tea to go in it after I finish it. So that's what's for lunch. This has been the day for packages being delivered, I guess. This is that sealer I ordered. I ordered it off of Amazon to uh, seal up Mylar bags. So that's a project that Olivia and I are going to work on for a future video. 
we want to use it a little bit to kind of figure out what we're doing before we actually video it because I've never used this before. I've never done anything in Mylar bags before. I <clears throat> looked into different ways to preserve food and for me this seemed the most economical. I don't have a pressure canner. They're expensive. I don't have very many jars. They're hard to find. I looked into vacuum sealers. They're really expensive. So then I looked into the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers and it's really not that expensive to get started. And you don't even need one of these sealers to use the Mylar bags, but Scott thought this would be easier because we do have quite a lot that we want to preserve for future use. And then I got my compost bin. <clears throat> This is for another project that I'm not going to say yet, that I'm going to wait until I get everything I need for it, um, and then I'll do a separate video on that as well. But this is um, also for a homesteading project that I've recently become very interested in. And so yeah, I needed a nice composting bucket, or it's a, it's a bin that you keep under your sink, and it has like a charcoal filter in the lid, so it doesn't draw bugs and get smelly. That was Scott's main complaint when we used to keep a compost bucket before, is that just the, the fruit flies and the gnats just were horrible. So that's supposed to prevent that. So yeah, and I'm still expecting one more purchase, one more uh, package today that I actually have to sign for. So I'm a little bit, my pr product that I want to do with Olivia is downstairs in the basement. So I'm a little bit hesitant. I have, that's why I haven't started it yet. Because I'm waiting, because I don't want to be downstairs and miss um, the FedEx guy, because I have to sign for this package. So I'm kind of just hanging out upstairs till, till the FedEx guy comes. But yeah, this is exciting. I wasn't expecting this today. So yay. So this is the project that Olivia and I are going to work on today. I am still waiting for that FedEx package to show up, but it's nearly 2.30 in the afternoon, and I really want to get this job done, so we're going to start without, without it, and hopefully we'll hear, hear him if he knocks on the door. Um, anyway, we worked on this shelving unit on Saturday. I took a little bit of footage of that, not a whole lot. But I will insert that here. So we are going to start this project in here. I'm going to get this corner cleaned out and a new shelf built. So this assembled. is where we're going to, yeah, assembled, no. whatever. Yeah. Not built. <laughs> Put together. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's another one. Just an empty box. So Scott bought these shelving units from Menards, this big tall one, and they got another one that's um, one tier shorter. And we're going to put that over in that corner. So that's the big project for today. We want to get everything in this corner cleaned out. I'm going to have to work on some laundry, <laughs> my laundry pile, but I've got all this stuff. I don't even know what half this stuff is. We're not going to really sort through it today. I don't think we'll have time for that, but we're going to pull everything out of here and put it in the vintage room just to get it out of the way. Um, and I'm going to clear off this shelf 
this shelving unit and we're going to move it uh, I know the sh it's shadowy back here sorry we're going to move it back against that wall and then we're going to put that new shelf that Scott bought in, in, um, and he already put it together for us we're going to put that here and continue my prepper pantry extended food pantry storage on that new shelving here um, we also have stuff up here but this shelf doesn't won't take a whole lot of weight so I'm just gonna put I think I'm gonna put my canning supplies up there uh, because those aren't aren't too heavy and that way I can keep everything like that t together in one place but um, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out as you can see we've got labels for everything and then that way we can kind of take inventory of what we have what we need to purchase more of etc etc down on, my, on the bottom shelf are all my homemade pickles we've got to go through those pickles to get you know get them used up um, give them away to friends and family I think but anyway yeah I'm really happy with how this shelving unit has turned out and I'm sure the other one will be just as nice it had to be shorter because this tall thing, this is the only place in, in our utility room where it would fit. Everything else, as you can see, has shelves that are already on the wall. So that's why he had to purchase a shorter one to go over there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my tripod set up. And we're going to get started getting that corner cleaned out. I'm gonna th I think the first thing I'm going to do is get all my clothes, get all the clothes off that hanging rack and go through them. Some of those are clothes that need to go to Goodwill. <laughs> They've just been hanging there for who knows how long. Uh, and some of them just needs to be put in respective people's closets. And here's the, here's the other shelf that Scott put together for us. It's very lightweight, but it holds a lot. It holds a lot of weight. I can't remember. I think it's like 200 pounds per, per shelf or something like that. So it's a really nice shelving unit. And like I said, he got it at Menards. some stuff that I'm not sure what to do with. This is our tent. It's actually Travis and Olivia's tent. They're the one that paid for it. This is homeschooling stuff. Yes, I still have homeschooling stuff. I need to go through all of that. Those boxes are kind of heavy for me to pick up though. That is a bucket of shoes that I need to go through and probably get rid of some of it. That bin back there is full of toys, stuffed animals that are Olivia's, and she said she's going to go through those. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of get this junk out of here, and I'll let Scott move those because they're heavy, and I'm going to let Olivia deal with stuffed animals. So yeah, just it's just amazing. How do people just accumulate? so much stuff I don't I don't even know that pot there is a big pot we use to boil water when we butcher chickens so I don't want to get rid of that because we might be butchering chickens again but it really needs to be stored outside with the rest of the chicken butchering stuff so that needs to go and then that that's just a food pan um, I don't really want to get rid of that either always can use another food pan for animals so, yeah, I'm going to just keep digging my way through all of this. 
crazy. So I got the metal shelf moved over against this wall and I had to leave a big space here because this is where we're going to eventually put our water heater. We're going to put our water heater down here and turn the closet that the water heater's in into more pantry space. That's down the road a ways but uh, I had to make sure and leave room for that and then I moved the storage shelf here. So Scott's home now, so maybe maybe Olivia can come down and help me organize food now that Scott's home. Because FedEx still has not arrived. I have a few number 10 cans of this um, extended life, like 25 year life, freeze dried foods. Um, I've got some from Augustine Farm. I also have from, some from my Patriot Supply. And I'm just going to put those on the top shelf here. My white paint marker that I've had forever is dead. <laughs> As you can see, it is not writing very good at all. The only other paint marker I have is a gold one, so we're going to have to make do with that. makes me almost want to just rewrite these except I don't have enough I don't think I have enough labels because those really don't look very good but that's okay you can still read them doesn't seem to be a whole lot better. I think it's time to invest in some more paint markers. <sighs> nope, this one is worse than the white one. Okay, well these stickers are going to be temporary because they look terrible. I'm going to get some more stickers and another paint marker and redo them. But for now, they will have to do. So I got that shelf all done and as you can see we still have plenty of room down here for other things and you can see where I need to uh, stock up on some things. I definitely need to pick up some more soup the next time I'm shopping and I went ahead and put my bouillon cubes there because you can use that as soup for soup as well. And then down here I've got oils. I'm going to bring those two jars of oil, coconut oil that I just got today, down and put on that shelf. Then we've got juices. Right now all I've got is a pineapple juice, but um, I can fill that row up pretty quick with 
different canned juices. Then we've got maple syrup. I want to get that box completely full and then I'll feel good about that. And then over on that last box, I've got just two things of honey. I want to finish off that row of honey at least. And then those white bottles are actually elderberry syrup that we use for uh, illness and colds and whatnot. And then up here on the top shelf, like I said, I've got my 25 year plus food and a big old thing of popcorn that we picked up recently when we went to a bulk store. And we picked up some bulk um, popcorn. We decided that that's where the tent's gonna go for now because like I said, we're not gonna be moving that water heater anytime soon. I still need to clean off that shelf. Not gonna tackle that today. And yeah, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot better in this corner, but don't know what we're gonna do with our coolers. We have to find a spot for them. I really don't want to block, I really don't want to block access to this shelving unit off at all. So I really don't want to put anything here. So I'm not sure really what we're gonna do. This fan, as far as I know, doesn't work, but Scott can fix it maybe. So that's why that's still there. And then, oh, come out here. There's the shoes. I'm gonna go through those. And some of them will be thrown away. Some of them will be given to Goodwill. And some of them I forgot I had. Those are my muck boots. Forgot I even had them. <laughs> Look at the mess. This is kind of like my Goodwill pile that I got started here. Those are all my clothes that I need to take upstairs. And most of this is homeschooling stuff, believe it or not. Most all of these boxes are homeschooling stuff that I need to go through and get rid of. Like I said, that's a box of stuffed animals Olivia is going to go through. That's just an empty box that needs to be thrown away. That's to the lid. That's the lid to our trash can that we use upstairs. I don't know. I don't know if we should even hang on to that. I don't even know. And there's my box of canning jars that, like I said, I'm going to put on that uh, shelf once it's completely cleaned off. And then that red thing there is a truck that my brother Doug made for Travis when he was a little boy. So. It's got sentimental value. I don't want to get rid of it. I will probably find a spot for it here in my vintage room once I get all of this other stuff done. What I probably do to tackle all this schoolwork is take it one box at, at a time, like one box every evening while I'm watching TV. Actually, I watch YouTube. I don't watch regular TV and um, sort through it. So that will not be part of this video. That dog box probably could just go out in one of the outside buildings. We don't use it much. It would only wouldn't hold Oliver anyway. <laughs> the last time we used it was last summer when I don't know if you remember the story that I told uh, in one of my videos back then about the raccoon attacking my chicken Virginia, and uh, we had to battle the coon and we brought Virginia in the house for the night and we put her in that box in the utility room where it was nice and calm and quiet and dark and she was able to she didn't get hurt at all but she was very freaked out so that's the last time we used that and so it just never got taken back out to the shed or the one of the outside buildings and those milk cartons can go out too so a lot of this is going to be going to different places in the on the in the house or on the property so I'm hoping that pretty much none of this will go back in that corner because like I said I really would like to keep that clear and have good access to that food storage area all right I think I'm done with this project for today Olivia was never never able to help me because we are still waiting for FedEx and it's almost time for us to start supper oh I hope he shows up today because I'll be really mad I waited around all day for nothing FedEx finally came. It is five o'clock at night. Um, and this is what we were waiting for. We ordered a grain mill. It's not a huge one, but it's supposed to work super fast. It's supposed to grind like nuts and any kind of grains and corn and stuff like that. And we, like I said, had mentioned earlier, we went to a bulk food store over the weekend 
and we got some wheat berries. Um, and we're going to try our hand at grinding wheat berries into flour and seeing how that goes. So yeah, I was waiting on this food mill, not food mill, grain uh, grinder. And this is what we had for supper. Scott was able to grill out. It's the first grilling of 2022. And these are bratwurst patties, which I've never seen those before. We picked these up at that bulk food store as well. Um, they were pretty good. Um, I, I think I like my bratwurst in a sausage form better. Um, I don't know, it's hard to explain. My brain was thinking I was eating a hamburger, but it tasted like a, like a bratwurst and it kind of threw me off a little bit. But it was good. It tasted really good. And I grilled up some peppers and onions to go on it. Had a few uh, little potato chips and a side salad with a couple of radishes. And that's what we had for dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thanks for spending the day with me. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. That really does help my channel when uh, the more thumbs up my videos gets. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below, and we will talk to you all later. Bye-bye, friends.